So as you may know, cross-dressing used to be illegal, right? In the last like 100 years, well, more than that, but I'm thinking of laws specifically in the 40s where you could be arrested for impersonating the opposite sex. But as, again, we probably know collectively, uh, most of us, when humans first evolved, well, we were naked, <laughs> but when we started wearing clothing was for two main reasons, and that was one, to protect ourselves from the elements. So if you were in super cold regions, you layered up. If you're in super warm regions, you protected yourself from the sun. And then if you're in mid range regions where it's like pretty warm but not too um, hot and there's not as much of a risk of sunburn cultures as we can see even today wear less clothing articles because they don't need it um, but there's also uh, besides the elements there's wearing clothing for artistic expression uh, which is a very inherent human thing and isn't found um, much among other species of animals and so humans started decorating themselves in garments and this was before the creation of sexism which is only about 5,000 years old and i say only but that's also a long time for like individual lives like we have had sexism for a long time and by sexism i also want to extend that to that's where you start to with this emphasis on gender is where you get other oppressions based upon gender so that extends into homophobia and transphobia and also the um when you have uh the british colonizing everybody it's also intertwined with white supremacy and ideas of gender being inherently eurocentric i digress so clothing came before the idea of gendered clothing is what that long-winded statement was <laughs> and clothing idea of gendered clothing probably way later um, and then also you get the idea of what gendered clothing is to change upon um, each era and also uh, location um, and culture because you have uh, men in other countries besides the one that I live in, which is the United States of America. Um, dresses and long hair, for example, are considered masculine and uh, genuinely like just everybody does it. It's, again, this ties into gendered ideas often in the West being tied with Eurocentric ideas and also white supremacy of where you had um, uh, the Brits coming in and cutting off um, indigenous men's hair that was long because you're a man and you have to have short hair. Um, and our idea of women equal long hair, man equal short hair is a very Western idea and not um, cross <laughs> all of the world. Um, you also used to have little boys or little babies in the West used to be dressed up in dresses as a baby um, and you'll see pictures of not too long ago little boys being in dresses because it was just like babies wear dresses that's what it is but in the west that died out and you had this idea of dresses being only for women which again is not <laughs> in the whole world if you see a lot of different countries just because the idea of a dress is basically the simplest clothing material if you just drape it over if anything dress was probably the one of the first clothing articles we had because you just take a big thing of at the you know hand woven material cut a hole in it and you can put it on and you got a poncho you got a dress whatever okay so going back into the last hundred years you could be in the united states of america at least <laughs> sent to prison for uh, cross-dressing, so wearing the wrong gendered clothes. And I mean, it's really just, it's clothes, it's makeup, it's hair, it's just these like, um, I was gonna say superficial, but they do have meaning, but it's these just like expression, these materials that 
theoretically don't inherently have gender. It's just fucking articles of clothes or cutting your hair. I'm gonna flash forward to today um, where you have, so we've had drag for, I mean, you could go back to a long time since the dawn of theater. People have been performing as different genders. If anything, theater could actually perhaps predate gender as well, but um, if you just have um, old theater, and like, I'm not just talking out of my ass here, I had like a theater history class. And, um, and then when you get passed into um, the construction of gender and also specifically um, sexism, you had a lot of men doing theater only um, in certain areas, <laughs> and, um, so men would play the roles of women, therefore dressing up as women in roles, uh, so you could, uh, have this go back, uh, people dress, like, post the constructed of gendered clothing, people dressing up as cross-dressing, um, but the idea of drag as we know it today, at least here in the West, you know, became popular in the last hundred years, but of course, again, as I said, there's a longer history to that. But, um, we have drag kings in the start of the millennia, and then in the, um, 80s, specifically, you had ball culture, and, um, I mean, I would just watch the movie Paris is Burning to get a better understanding of that if you don't know about ball culture, which um, then also has developed into drag, which includes drag kings, drag queens, everything in between, um, and also paired with, um, I mean, like, women used to not be able to wear pants, right? Like, you could literally, like, women had to wear dresses, and men could be sent to jail for wearing a dress. Um, and butch women sent to jail for wearing men's clothes. And there's the, uh, what is it? The three clothing article where they would see, okay, is this, just look up three, three clothing article rule for a better explanation. Okay, so now I'm flash boarding back to today. So trans people have always been around, but with the newly, like representation and in more of the public eye, people are more aware of it. So you have people, you know, you are born, or if you wanna say maybe not born, but like when you're like three or whatever, at a young, 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 young age, if not born, you are LGBT. I've been a lesbian my whole life. So people understand sometimes that they're trans from a young age. And then there's obvious, because of a history of just making up the idea that kids can't be LGBT and also that LGBT people, adults, can't interact with kids because we're pedophiles, which was just made up to oppress us. Da 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 da. People are like, kids can't tra transition. Transitioning is a child. Um, I'm gonna get to drag too, but they're connected. Transitioning a child is literally just like probably wearing different clothes, cutting your hair. It's not medical. <laughs> um, and with a backlash of like kids shouldn't transition, um, I think is this dangerous slope of going back to making it illegal to wear different clothing, you know. In, in the in the way that they describe it, I'm like, okay, so are we going back to the era where like girls have to wear dresses and boys have to wear pants and also like you're not allowed to wear pants as a girl because then you could ride a bicycle and you could be a free woman uh, because that's also the era where women can't drive. Um, so a bicycle was a mode of transportation for women too because you don't have to have a license to get a bicycle. Da, 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 da. You can go back into the suffragette movement and bicycles across different countries, actually. The bicycle has... And it, I mean, it's connected because, oh, if you wear pants, you can wear a bicycle. Don't wear a bicycle on a skirt. I tried. Doesn't work. <laughs> um, 
like a long flowy skirt. Anyway, I'm like, okay, so you're saying, can we no longer like cut kids hair and or grow kids hair out and they have to wear certain clothes? Like this is starting to sound like we're going back to like policing articles of clothing. And I mean policing as in literally because people would be sent to jail <laughs> for cross-dressing. I'm also going to pivot this over into drag because I think it's related with this whole like, okay, so I drag too. What, just wearing different articles of clothing, different hair, different makeup. Okay, so you're not allowed to, again, wear different clothing. Like it just, it sounds very, like I literally, I went to a, yes, family friendly drag show which i will get into also about uh this woman she is an uh one of like an elder lgbt member she went up on the stage and she talked about when she would be like afraid of getting arrested her and her friends um for dressing up as a woman and she is a woman so she's a trans woman and a drag queen um and she talked about a time where before i was ever born she was like, what we're doing right now would have been illegal, <laughs> just expressing ourselves. And also instead of, again, segueing into this, I'm just gonna go on to my next point. Um, drag is an art form. Like all other art forms can be molded to different audiences. So, I just don't understand this idea with um, conflating drag to sexuality and adult content. I mean, I do understand it's because it goes back to the age old, oh, LGBT people are just fucking pedophiles, um, which was again, just made up to oppress us. So drag is an art form, just like movies or theater or ballet. And um, I was dressing up in makeup and tutus when I was a kid in ballet, nobody was fucking protesting that. Um, Cause it's not heavily associated solely with LGBT people. Um, it's funny, if a movie comes out uh, and it's a kid movie, maybe uh, put out by the big the big mouse, right? You don't have people protesting and go, a movie? You know, they make rated R movies with sex scenes in them. Well, yes, they do. But they also make movies for kids and family-friendly movies and movies the whole family can enjoy because it's an art form. Same with theater. I was dressing up as a kid with makeup and costumes as a kid. Nobody's protesting that. <laughs> Um, but it's because it's associated with LGBT people. I mean, theater is also, but, you know, sometimes a little bit more covert and the straights enjoy it too, I guess. Um, but when I would go to this family friendly, uh, once a month drag event pre-COVID, um, it was at... It was like this big, uh, it was at a comic book. Oh, Betty Pages owns the comic book store. That's why she's called Betty Pages, like pages of a comic book. Um, and obviously, she, no, obviously, if you don't know, Betty Page. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, plan words. Um, so we would go. So by the way, also, I was a drag king. There's drag at the comic book place and drag in bars where you have to be 21 or 18, depending on, to even fucking get in. And at the comic book store, it was like, let it go, let it go. Don't copy me, copyright me, big mouse, whatever. And then, yeah, at the fucking bars where you had to be 21 to even get in, they check ID, people will fucking, like, cause it's a bar and it's a, an adult space. And I would, you know, have pasties on and show everybody my tits. Um, but at the family friendly one, it's like, 
and we're happy. Like it's, it was different because <laughs> it's an adult scene and a family friendly scene. They also gave us free Girl Scout Thin Mints. It was awesome. We also took like a box on the Thin Mints. It was great. Um, and there'd be protesters out, um, just in the summer. In the winter, you know, they couldn't too much to go out in the cold, <laughs> but when it was warm out, um, there'd be protesters saying that pedophiles, da da da. Obviously they haven't come in and see that it's just like, whatever. <laughs> um, because if they would have just con came in, they would have been like, oh, it just looks like a whatever. <laughs> um, they would be holding signs saying whatever. And then the kids would see that the kids coming in with their families would see this. So we would counter protest and all we would do is hold up umbrellas, rainbow umbrellas to just block them. We wouldn't say anything. We didn't have signs. All we would do is just shield them from the views of people coming into the building because like, who wants to see that? Especially kids. So they're the ones traumatizing kids. But anyway, with this whole idea of kids shouldn't go to drag shows, kids shouldn't transition. And I'm just like, are you saying kids should not wear certain articles of clothing that their other, their peers in their school are wearing? Kid A wears pants, kid B wears a dress. Like, oh, kid A, you can't wear what kid B wears. What year is this? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, last I check, it was the end of 2022. It's just like, I'm like, are we going back to like, you can't wear, what are you going to say? Like, oh, you can't grow out your hair? Something that's inherently natural to your own body. If you are born with a penis, which also we have different ideas of what that means because you also have intersex children uh, being put into boxes and also their genitals being mutilated unconsensually. That's a whole other thing but it is connected. Um, I'm like, you, you realize these things aren't like, <laughs> I don't know why, I do know why, <laughs> but like, I don't understand why people, basically it comes down to associating LGBT people, well, two things. One, associating LGBT people with um, uh, sex and like intercourse and adult content even though like yeah as an adult i my lesbianism is very adult because i'm 26. a lesbian who's 11 is just going to be watching princess movies and holding hands with somebody like because we are different because we're different ages <laughs> what a concept <laughs> you know and of course um, the cisgender heterosexuals, they can have their little kid content with like crushes and stuff. And then they can have their adult movies with sex scenes and that's fine. But LGBT people are not allowed that for some reason. But so you have gay, lesbian, trans, bi. And then you also have this concept that doesn't have to do with, um, well it does, but that also just has to implementing um, the binary and that is affecting women, even cisgender straight women. Because so I'm going back to the bicycle. And by that, I mean, that's a metaphor for like, just like women's rights of um, existing. And also not just women. And you have people of other, other cultures, like indigenous cultures, who their expression is different than the white Western. So it are we just going back to implementing this like racist binary of like you have to do this and you have to do this I don't care what your culture says and I don't care what you're comfortable with in your own body because your hair just grows naturally cloth is just cloth I don't care about that you have to follow our rules I'm like are we going back to that because you realize by saying that like um kids can't transition and like kids can't go to drag shows like that's we're circling back to that right I, is that what you want that's not what I want because I feel like it's 
not great. Anyway, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Um, food for thought.